Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is bamboo, or sugarcane I think is what I'm calling the tutorial. So it's uh, blocks like uh, sugarcane that can basically grow along uh, beaches, um, swamps, and um, I believe uh, rivers as well. Now they, they spawn within the biome itself. They don't actually spawn necessarily directly up against the water. They don't have any requirement for them to spawn next to the water. They can be placed pretty much anywhere. Uh, you can use a item to basically grow the plant or um, uh, it will grow during every 30 seconds if there is a um, block above or a, a two block um, area above at where it can basically generate. So um, over time uh, this will should grow up to a maximum height of three blocks high. Uh, it generally takes every 30 seconds to um, basically have a chance of updating and if that's true then it will basically um, after 30 seconds it has a random chance of updating so um, you can configure that how you want you can make it faster or slower however you want but uh, right now I'm just basically going to show you how it all works uh, before I get into it, I sped up the, the timer just to uh, showcase basically what it's doing. Now, naturally generating blocks like this won't um, increase over time for some reason. I'm not sure why. It might just be because they're generated, but if you place down a block, it will um, basically grow up to three high and then you can basically destroy it and get the items from it. So um, with that being said, uh, let's hop into the tutorial. So we have two or three elements and three procedures. Uh, we're using uh, the neighbor block, uh, when, when neighbor block uh, changes across a few other places as well. Um, however, if we import our resources, so we're going to need a a block texture, a item texture, and then we're also going to need a sugar cane texture or model, pardon me, and you're going to select your uh, texture for your block to your model as well. So when you have all those imported, what you can do is uh, create your item. So you want to select your item texture, then you want to give your item a name and adjust any of the other settings if you need to. And then what we're doing is when right clicked on block, hand uh, location, what we're gonna be doing is testing if um, the block that we're clicking on, so what block we're cl clicking on is either grass, dirt, sand, or red sand, or um, a sugarcane block itself. So. If that's true, then what it's going to also ask or test for is if the block above is going to be air. And if the block if, and below it or the block that we're clicking on is true and the uh, block above it is air, then it's going to um, place the block of the sugar cane at one block above. It's going to set a MBT logic variable to block grown and that's gonna set it to the block above as well, and then we're basically playing a sound. When you've done that, click next and save, and then we can move on to our sugarcane block itself. So the first thing that you need to do is select your model. Uh, you don't need rotation, but if you wanna add a rotation, you can. Uh, you wanna set the uh, block to be transparent parts, and you want the um, transparency type to be cut out. If you have um, a smaller block than a cube, then you're going to also want to adjust the um, hitbox size as well. Uh, your particle texture for custom models will always be this bottom square, so if you want to adjust the colors that it drops for particles, you can adjust that. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is set the uh, GUI name for the block and set the material type to plants. 
the creative inventory tab to decorations. That's where most, most um, plants are located. Sound on step needs to be plants and uh, your hardness and resistance need to be zero uh, so you can quickly break the block. Uh, lastly, on this uh, general properties tab, you're going to need to set the can bl walk through the block uh, and check this box right here. Uh, drop in properties, you need uh, the custom drop and the creative pick item set to your item that you just created. Uh, your drop amount needs to be one. Tool able to destroy it uh, should not be specified and the uh, tool harvest level should be set to zero. Moving on, uh, we want to set our tick rate to one and this will basically allow us to have block updates. Uh, setting it to zero will prevent it from growing. So you can have this any number higher, but I suggest having it at one so it uh, the procedures work properly. Uh, the block color on the map should be set to foliage and the uh, reaction to being pushed should be set to destroy. All these other settings here are perfectly fine. So moving on, uh, we want to go to our inventory um, slash MBT um, uh, window and then what we want to do is enable the entity and inventory on this block. We don't have a GUI so we don't need to enable this or change this how it works. Uh, however, when we do enable this, we need to set the slot number to zero and we need to disable these two checkboxes right here. Moving on, uh, we have our when neighbor block is um, when neighbor block changes. So what this is doing, it's a little bit of a complex system, but I'm sure there's more efficient ways to do it. But this is the only way that I could figure out how it could actually work. So what this is doing is it's going to first test if the block below is either grass, if not, or if not grass, then what it's going to do is test again if the block underneath is not dirt, and then underneath that it's going to test if not sand, uh, red sand, and then a uh, sugarcane block. So if none of these blocks are underneath the block itself, what it's going to do is then test to see if the block has a variable. So if the variable is uh, block grown, uh, now we enabled NBT data so we can actually use uh, block NBT data. Now another thing that I've noticed a lot of people are doing when making their procedures is they're going to entity and they're going and setting a entity tag, which is. You will most likely run into dependencies uh, issues. The dependencies are things that triggers. Uh, these little tags up here are dependencies. So um, this is what the block or the, the trigger can actually support. If I were to add a entity MBT tag and test for um, a MPD tag that is entity based, it's not going to save properly because the required dependencies for the trigger are not now requires an entity tag. So we need to make sure that you go to the blocks and then grab the tags from here because if you use the entity tags, then it's going to um, not work properly. I'm getting a lot of people saying that my procedures don't work and it's mostly because of this issue. So make sure that you have the right um, right MBT tag when you're setting these things up. Uh, with that said, uh, it's basically just testing if the, the block has a tag called block grown for an MBT tag and it's set to true. If, it is true, then what it's doing is it's going to remove the block with a drop. If not, then it's not going to remove the block with a drop. And then what that's doing is when the block is added, we're basically running that same procedure. So same procedure. It's just uh, basically over on this side now because it has the same dependencies, we can use that in the same procedure. 
And uh, for the update tick, uh, this is where the, gr the block growth and everything happens. So what we're doing is we're first calling a procedure. Uh, when you're calling a procedure, you can go to the advanced tab and then uh, select call procedure. And then what we wanna do is select the one with the coordinates. So when you have dragged that down onto your thing, then you wanna select uh, the sugar cane when neighbor block changes. And that will basically test constantly for an update um, if the, the block below is one of the blocks. If not, then it's just going to remove the block with uh, the required uh, drop things that are placed. It'll make more sense later on. But basically, if the player breaks the block in the center or whatever, then you want it to drop, um, you know, the items and stuff uh, based on the if there's certain uh, procedures. So the next thing that we're doing is we're setting a growth timer. This is an, a block MBT tag. We're getting the growth timer um, variable and then we're setting it to plus one. Because our tick rate is set to one, it's going to be updating every tick. So this is going to increase every tick. So when we actually test for our condition and measure it in seconds, then we're gonna have to do some math. The last thing that we're doing is we're setting a um, MBT block, um, a block MBT tag that says random growth. This is to a random number. So the first thing down here, what we're doing is we're testing for growth timer, which is our timer part, is equal to or greater than 60 or 600. This is should be 60 or 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds has a chance of updating. Um, if that's true, uh, then it's going to test for the growth or random growth, which is a 25% chance of it actually growing. And if that's true, what it's going to do is it's going to test if the block above is air and if the um, one of two conditions. The first condition is if it's, if the block below is either grass, dirt, um, sand, or red sand, that's directly below. So if that's um, below, then we shouldn't have a sugarcane block uh, below it, so we don't need to test for that. If that's true, then what we're going, or if that's not true, then what we're going to do is we're t testing for two things. Um, we're going to test if the block below is a sugar cane, and if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to test for two blocks below if the grass, dirt, sand, or red sand is below that. So you have your um, block that you're currently testing from. You should have a sugar cane block below that, so this block here, and then you should have your um, your actual uh, soil type of block that we're testing for below that. So if that's true, then it's going to grow um, one uh, sugarcane above. So it's at a total height of, of three um, blocks tall. So if that's true, one of those conditions are true, then what it's going to do is it's going to place the block uh, or a sugarcane block at the one block above because there's air now. We know that and then it's going to set the uh, MBT logic tag to block grown plus one, so the block that we just placed, or the block that just grew, to true. And if that's also true and that all runs and we're resetting the timer. So that's all there is to that part. Uh, there is only one last thing that we need to do is create a structure that is a one wide by one deep by three blocks tall of our sugar cane. Then what we want to do is create that structure and we're going to be importing it into our structures um, file here for our sugar cane. And then we're going to make a generator, which we're going to set the structure. And then we're going to set the chance of it generating, which is uh, this setting this to 1 million will be one per chunk. 
and down here you can basically adjust how many cluster or how many um, structures uh, that it can generate in a clump. So I have set it to one to five. So this is the minimum. This is the maximum number of uh, structures that can spawn in that group. And down here, what I've done is just set random rotation. It, it won't matter if your block doesn't have rotation, but um, the uh, it has a chance if you want to. First motion, This all these settings here are the same. The block height offset, you might need to increase this to one. I think the default is zero. So increase this to one if your structures are spawning in the ground. And lastly, what we're doing is we're testing for the soil blocks that we're testing for. So if it's dirt, grass, or either type of sand, then what we're going to do is make sure that the block can uh, basically generate only on those blocks. And we're going to select our biomes that we wish for it to generate in. So I have set it to river, swamp, beach, and swamp hills. And uh, last, lastly, what we're doing is uh, when the block is generated, uh, we also basically make it so it's calling the when neighbor block um, changes uh, procedure that we created prior. And this will just make sure that um, no floating blocks or anything like that will be above water or any other blocks that it shouldn't be on. It might drop some items still regardless if it's um, not a grown block, but there isn't any particular way to go about fixing that, as far as I know. At the moment, at least, I couldn't figure anything out. So um, with that being said, uh, just save your structure and you have everything set up, you're ready to go. If you found this tutorial helpful, uh, consider subscribing if you're not already and uh, rate the video. It does help with the algorithm a little bit and uh, pull more people into the channel so they can also learn um, and find out about Amp Creator as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.